following video is a pre-calc video for graphing rational functions. So a rational function is what we have described as laces. Um, it also has another name. It's called a hyperbola. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple table of values. And I'm not even going to fill in the table of values. But I'm going to use the idea of a table of values to go ahead and graph this. So what we're going to look at is the function f of x equals 1 over x. This is the most basic form of the, the graph, what we've called the parent graph or the base function. Um, and we'll look at, uh, see what it asks. So I have a table of values here from negative 10 and it goes down off the page to 10. And I'm just going to think about what I would get if I was at that point by taking that and mentally plugging it into that. So if I plug negative 10 in, I get at negative 10, I get 1 tenth. At negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm down a tenth, which is right there next to the axes. At negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm down a fifth, pretty close to the axes. At negative 1, 2, 3, I'm down a third. At negative 2, I'm down a half. At negative 1, I'm down 1. At 0.8, if you divide 1, divide it by 0.8, if you divide 1 by those decimals, you can actually take your calculator and you can do that. Um, and I get 1 divided by 0.8 and divided by negative 0.8, I get 1.25. So at this decimal over 0.8, I'm going down 1.25, which is about right there. At 0.5, 1 divided by 0.5 is negative 2. So at negative a half, I'm down 2, right about there. At 0.2, 1 divided by 0.2, 1 divided by negative 0.2. So if I go over 0.2, I'm down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And at over 0.1, uh, 1 divided by 0.1, I'm already down 10. So over just a little bit, I'm down 10. I'm all the way down in here. And then at over that, 1 divided by that, I'm like down 1,000. So the first part of the graph looks like this. The second branch of the graph, well, really the non-existent part of the graph, so what would happen if I plug in 0 for there? If I plug in 0, I don't have any values. I get 1 over 0, which is my undefined spot. So I'll put und, undefined. So there's, a, there's like a hole or a gap in the graph here. At here, 1 divided by 0 0.001, I'm all the way up 1,000. 1 divided by 0.1, 1 divided by 0.1 is 1 tenth. So over at a tenth, I'm up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm up here. And what happens is all of these get mirrored all over here. So at point 0.2, I'm over at point 0.2, I'm up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, at point 0.5, I'm up a half. I'm up uh, 1 divided by point 0.5 is 2. At point 0.8, I'm like 1.25, 1, 1. 1 divided by um, 2 um, at um, 1 half. One at three, I'm at a third. At five, I'm at a fifth. At ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I'm up a tenth. And I get this branch of the hyperbola. And that's just a point plotting method. And you could see those branches if you were to plug one over x in on your graphing calculator. But this is pre-calc, and we need to talk about all this fun stuff. So first of all, where are the asymptotes? Well, the vertical asymptotes exist where there's holes, vertically holes in a graph. And that right there, there's, there's an undefined value. Anytime you have that vertical asymptote, um, you're going to also have a domain restriction. So I have a vertical asymptote at straight up and down, an x value of 0. There's also a horizontal asymptote here. And that horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So I have two asymptotes. Those two things right there are going to help me fill in these two things right here. Domain, everything but that vertical asymptote. It's continuous, it skips over zero, and then it's continuous. So if I was going to write domain, I would say negative infinity all the way up to zero, and then from zero all the way out to infinity. Range, same. It goes down, up, but it doesn't hit zero, and then it starts back up here, and it goes up. 
So if I look at up down, there's no value at zero. So negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity once again. And the fact that I use parentheses means I don't include the brackets. Points of interest, diverge versus converge, mean girls. So um, when you're traveling along the x-axis, there are these important parts where graphs do funky things. And one of the funky things they might do is they might be coming at each other, but then they diverge from each other and they go away from each other. And that happens right here. And we're going to take some time and, and we will look for those points where they, they're, they're coming at each other, but then they go away from each other. They diverge. So this one diverges at an x value of 0. Everywhere else, if I'm approaching any other point on the graph, they're coming together, but not at 0. They, they go away from each other at an x value of 0. And the last thing is end behavior. So let's travel to the left, and we've talked about this. As, as x goes to negative infinity, as I go to the left, my function does not go up or down me forever. My function gets closer and closer and closer and closer to this asymptote. So I'm going to say that. As x goes to negative infinity, my function f of x approaches, and it approaches this asymptote, which is the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Let's state the other behavior. As x goes to positive infinity, as my x value, as I go out that way on my graph, as I get farther and farther that direction, my function f of x approaches y equals 0 again. Now, sometimes I might say, hey, as I go out this way, it approaches y equals 0 from the bottom. And as I go this way, it approaches y equals 0 from the top. Uh, but that's pretty good. f of x approaches y equals 0. Now that's your base graph. That's a whole bunch of stuff about what laces would be, your, your um, parent graph. But there's a, little bit of there's a little bit more here. And a little bit more is what if it's not your base graph? What would happen if I put some stuff with it? And I mean, still looks like laces. But what are the characteristics of those other graphs? What are some, some different things that we can look at as far as uh, moving the graph around? Well, we would know this would be laces and it's bumped to the right too. But there's a way to look at an uh, equation and tell what asymptotes are. So let's look at this one. This one's called vertical asymptotes. And what I've done is I've screenshot some pictures off of what would look like your graphing calculator. So if you plug that in on your graphing calculator, depending on the model, um, you might get a picture that looks like this, or if you plug that in on Desmos, you might get a picture that looks like this and, and there. But the first thing here is vertical asymptotes. So there are those asymptotes that appear like this. So I'm going to dot that guy in. There's a vertical asymptote there. I notice that's at 2. Look at that. And I have an asymptote right here. And I dot that in. And I have a vertical asymptote at, at negative 3, and I think it's pretty easy to tell the vertical asymptotes are, well, it's what makes the bottom 0. If I put a 2 in there, I'd have a vertical asymptote right there. If I put a negative 3 in there, I'd have a vertical asymptote right there. But what makes the bottom 0 there? Hmm. Well, looks like there's a vertical asymptote here, and it looks like there's a vertical asymptote here. This one has a couple of vertical asymptotes. And what we said is that what makes the bottom 0? So I can take the bottom, x squared minus 2x plus, uh, minus 3. I can set it equal to 0. And you could have done that here, and you could have done that here. But I can set that equal to 0 and solve it out, and I can find where my vertical asymptotes are. x and x, uh, factors of negative 3 that are negative 2 are negative 3 and positive 1. Let's make sure it works. x squared minus 3x plus 1x is negative 2x minus 3 is there. So if I set that equal to 0, I get an x value that's negative 1. And if I set that equal to 0, I get an x value that's 3. And you notice those are my two vertical asymptotes. So thing one, you can find vertical asymptotes by setting the bottom equal to 0. Thing two, horizontal asymptotes. Hint, the degree is the key. Horizontal asymptotes are the ones that travel left to right, that go like this. 
that go like this. Now there's definitely a horizontal asymptote on this one here, but I have an asymptote. There's like three branches here. There's a branch, there's a Johnny T looking branch, and another branch. If I draw a horizontal asymptote, it'll actually go through the middle. That's okay. We're talking about asymptotes on the extremities. Here again, draw a horizontal asymptote, it'll go through the, the middle. So here's a horizontal asymptote, here's a horizontal asymptote, and here's a horizontal asymptote. And it says, hint, the degree is the key. The degree of the top is 1, the degree of the bottom is 2. The degree of the top is 2, the degree of the bottom is 3. Degree on the top is zero, degree on the bottom is one. And the first thing I notice is that the bottom degree, the, numer the denominator degree, is bigger than the top degree. So bottom is bigger than top, looks like we have a horizontal asymptote right there. And I think that's what my, underneath my bubble says. Yep, horizontal asymptote of y equals zero if bottom degree is bigger than the top degree. So that happens. Well. What if they have equal degrees? Let's see if I can erase this. What if they have equal degrees? Here, 2 to the x to the first, x to the first. These two degrees are equal. These two degrees are equal. And these two degrees are equal. So part two is, what if, they're e what if their degrees are equal? Well, let's look here. So I have an I have a asymptote here at 2. This one, I have an asymptote here. That one asymptote is at negative 3. So this one's asymptote is at, let me see there, that's a x value uh, or a y value, y equals 2. This one is y equals negative 3. And here I have an, uh, a horizontal asymptote there. And you can't tell, but that one's horizontal asymptote is at y equals 5 over 2. I guarantee you that's it. How do I know that? Degrees are equal, you use the leading coefficient divided by leading coefficient. 2 divided by 1, negative 3 divided by 1, 5 divided by 2. And you can tell if it has a horizontal asymptote. Degrees are equal, use a leading coefficient. That's a rule. Oh, I got rid of that. Horizontal asymptotes um, are division of the leading coefficient if the degrees are the same. If those have the same degrees, you divide the leading coefficients. And then the last one, top degree is bigger, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 3 over 2, I don't see a horizontal asymptote there, I don't see a horizontal asymptote there, and I don't see a horizontal asymptote there. It doesn't have a horizontal asymptote if the top degree is bigger. Now, last but not least, there is an asymptote called a slant asymptote, and again, the degree is key. Now, a slant asymptote is exactly what it sounds like. It's, a, it's an asymptote as a slant. And the key is, if that top degree right there is one more than the bottom degree, if 2 is one more than 1, 3 is one more than 2, 3 is one more than 2, then it's going to have a slant asymptote. Um, and that slant asymptote, um, I will show you in a later video how to find that, but here it is on this one. There's a slant asymptote, and we could name that line. Here's actually another slant asymptote right there. And on this one, there's a slant asymptote that exists right like that. And again, the key is top degree is one bigger than the bottom degree. Then we have a slant asymptote. Okay. Now, all of this built up to this little asymptote cheat sheet. And what this is going to tell you, I don't know if you want to take pictures of this and save it and, and however. Uh, here, let me asymptote. I'll, uh, I'll zoom out in a second here and you can take a picture after I, after I describe this. But for your asymptotes, if you have a vertical asymptote, it's always a zero of the denominator. You'll have a straight up and down one at, at that spot. A horizontal asymptote, there's three cases. If the numerator degree is less than the denominator degree, numerator less than denominator, the top degree is less than the bottom degree, you have a, a horizontal asymptote at zero. If the numerator degree is equal to the denominator degree, you take the leading coefficient of the top over the leading coefficient of the bottom. And if the numerator degree is greater than the do denominator degree, there's no horizontal asymptote. Slant asymptote. 
slant asymptote. If numerator degree is one more than denominator degree, so if the top degree is one more than the bottom, the graph has a slant asymptote. I will show you how to find that slant asymptote coming up. And last but not least, there is something called point discontinuity. Um, at times, you're going to be graphing and there's going to be a vertical asymptote that you think is going to be there and it's going to disappear. Um, that happens when there's factors on the top and factors on the bottom that cancel each other out. When this happens, a point of discontinuity will occur where the asymptote would have been. It like disappears and you're going to put a little circle there to kind of denote, hey, there's a spot here that, that doesn't even actually exist for the graph. Okay, so that's the notes. Um, here is, let's go ahead and um, view, I'll zoom about 75%. Um, if you want to take a picture of that, there's your asymptote rule. So you could screenshot that and then um, edit it down and you could have the, the asymptote rules. And this is asymptotes for, oh, there's vertical. Ooh, I better, uh, let me try this again. Uh, let's zoom out just a little bit more. That might be too small. There's the whole page. Um, you can screenshot that and, and blow it up. Asymptote rules for any rational expression. In video two, I'm going to do example problems.